Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. I'm headed out to the pasture to continue project 189. We're gonna get the big herd. We gotta get them up to the front. I gotta start feeding them in there, enticing them to come into the corral system because the big guy is gonna be loaded up later on this week, here in a couple of days, and he's going to strap it. Got more to tell you about that. So we're back for day two or three. I don't know what this is. Got all of the pipe cut yesterday. Doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but um, I think this will get us by. I got the girls are with us. They're gonna come down and hang out with me in the pasture. We're gonna get this hauled down here with the trailer. We're gonna go through here and with the calves and we'll start setting some pipe. Big Joe! Good. Yeah, setting our setting a down pipe three feet in the ground, and then I'm just using a T post to make sure it lines up to the rest of the fence that it's already pre existing. I tore out oh, I don't know, 75 yards worth of fence that was really, really bad. So I'm having to reset the pipe, set new pipe, and then we're dealing with these gullies here, these washouts. So I'm trying to handle that as well. Okay, we're going from Spectres are over there. Yep.
So it'll tie back in right here. This is an existing fence that we tore out this section. I was talking about about 75 yards worth. And we're gonna tie into what I think is good enough to patch up and save us some money. Uh, because there is a five strand fence here. Really needs to be six for an exterior. Uh, but the key posts are tall, which is what I like. Um, and the fence is in decent shape. So we're gonna tie into it right here on this last post. Two feet. I need to go a lot deeper. Need to go. It's only two feet. I need to go a little bit deeper. I'd feel better about it if I went deeper. Well, that's uh, enough for today. I'm glad the wife and um, Brooksy came out and hung out with me this morning for a little bit. It's just uh, it's just too hot to be out here too long and they helped me. We set a couple of posts and thankful for that. But um, here are the yearlings, they're doing good. Staying in their shade tree, because it is hot. So still got some posts to set. I'll do that later on, maybe early, early in the morning if it gets too hot without them. Um, I can come knock it out on my own and. And uh, anyway, it's just nice to have some company today. And uh, I enjoy that. And, uh, they get to come out every now and then. So but we'll see you guys in a little bit. I think they're wanting to go out. It's just not ready yet. Guys, I'm sorry. Pretty soon, everybody's up here waiting. You see the ranger they're waiting on new ground or cubes, one or the other. Anytime I open the gate and they're up here, well, first of all, they've been following me a whole bunch here lately because uh, anytime they see the uh, green ranger they come running they come running because they know they get cubes they come running because <laughs> i go through this gate and they're ready for new ground we're working on it. i promise you we're getting there guys just give me just a little bit we'll get there okay we'll get you on some new ground so they're ready to get out the gate and this is pretty much how easy it is to move bison uh, when you want them to go from pasture to pasture you can train them and i know a lot of other bison producers do this you can train them and and they know how the rotation goes and hopefully uh it'll be like this whenever we do get this next pasture open so that'll be awesome but continuing project 189 also we're gonna get the big herd 
we got to get them up to the front and get them ready to start coming into the corral i got to start kind of um feeding them in there enticing them to come into the corral system because the big guy is going to be loaded up later on this week here in a couple of days and he's going to stratford got more to tell you about that Um, and so what I'm going to do is here in just a little bit, I'm going to open up a gate and it basically just lets them have access into it. And, and the red barn is up there. So I'm going to open up a gate over here. I'll show you that, but he'll be, they'll be able to go in there because they're so curious. Bison are so curious and want to know everything's going on. They'll be able to go in there, check things out. And, uh, what I'm going to start doing is enticing them with cubes and then I got to catch them in the corral. Um, and I'll do that probably on the day of. I'll catch him in the corral, and then I've got to single him out and load him, which is not the easiest thing to do if you guys have ever know if you've known Big Joe. But for now, I got to get them at least coming up there and getting in the corral and hanging out in that open area where near Marissa's flowers are. So what we're gonna do with the big guy is he's going to Doc Parsons. If you missed my last video, I announced that. Um, I talked to Gerald Parsons, my guy up at Stratford Animal Hospital, uh, a bison guy. He, uh, he's, I talked to him about Big Joe and our issues, and we only had three babies this year, and, you know, what, what are the chances of this and that? And so um, he said, well, we can uh, check his semen. So um, we're going to load him up, and I'm going to take him to Stratford. It's only like 35, 40 minutes away. And um, we're gonna run him through Doc's awesome uh, handling system, squeeze chute, everything. Good thing is, is we'll, Doc said we'll find out in about 20 minutes or so his situation. Maybe his sperm count is low. Um, maybe uh, we just ran into uh, some hiccups last year with the weather, drought, um, putting him in with new females. I don't know, could be lots of different things, but hopefully he is fertile. That is the number one thing that we want with the big fella here. Since I'm up here, a lot of people have been asking about Haas. If, if Big Joe is infertile for these four cows, and I've only got four cows that are breedable in this pasture at the Ponderosa, at the entire Ponderosa, there's only four. Actually, there's five now. Let me, let me correct that. I do have one that is now two years old and able to breed. So we have five, and I just realized that because she's, she's one of my young ones, but she's She's right over here. She is two now, and so she's able to breed this summer. Um, uh, Haas is not old enough to breed. If Joe is infertile and uh, I do whatever with him, Haas is not old enough. He has to be two years old. All bison have to be two years old to breed. I'm not saying it can't happen with uh, younger mature females um, before they turn two, but you don't really want that to happen because you could have um, calving problems but Haas is just too young. And then there's the other option is we have Dunbar. Um, <laughs> we've talked about bringing Dunbar over here, uh, but you know, I don't want to jump to conclusions or anything. We'll just see uh, what's going on with Big Joe. We will make our decisions from there. And of course we will let you know on that, what happens with Big Joe. I'm really excited to take you guys with me over to Doc Parsons place. I've been there a couple of times, but uh, he's got a lot of bison, a lot of good bison. My first five started from his, which includes Dunbar, Eleanor, Bell Star, and Peaches. I lost one in my first year. Her name was Lucy. But other than that, um, I'm excited to take you guys with me on this and, and see the big guy being worked. And, and uh, we'll go from there and see what our results are and uh, we'll make our decisions after that. So stay tuned guys. I'm gonna run up here, open up the gates, uh, let them have access to it so that they can go in there whenever. I'm not gonna push them or rush them or stress them out in any way. I'm just opening up the gate so they can just go in there uh, when it's convenient because I'm, I'm four days away from loading him up. So there's no rush yet.
All right, so this will stay here. It's open. So kind of give you a little, when we built the front fence, this is what you saw a lot of. So we, we came through here in this area. Um, we built this front stretch with continuous panels and a top rail. So this is pasture two. This is currently where Big Joe and them are. They got a pond down there. They've been spending a lot of time in the pond. There's our front, front entry right here. In case you've ever seen it, if you drive by, you can see it easy to tell where this place is. Um, and then here, this is where Marissa's pretty flowers are. All that, they're beautiful right now. She's done a great job with them and a lot of work on those, by the way. But I'm gonna leave this open for them, but I'm gonna tie that up so it won't close shut because they may rub on it if it's open. And uh, we've got the barn shut off, but what they can do is they can go around over there, which is where I just opened our uh, lane. It's our big lane. And I'll be able to load him out right there. And the, this is the pre-existing corral that was already there uh, when I brought the when I bought the property, and um, it's in great shape. And I've loaded animals out there before, so it'll work just fine. Well, guys, I want you to meet somebody you may have noticed it in this video of us uh, setting pipe and, and working on Project 189. But take a look at the newest member of the Ponderosa. Meet Elsa. Elsa is a Pyrenees Anatolian mix, and uh, Kevin and Mom have always raised Pyrenees. Um, just they've always had one, whether it was with their sheep or just at the barn. Or right now, some of you may have seen Fiona, which is I call her the polar bear, um, at uh, the Dunbar place. She's just a dog that hangs out around the place, and she protects uh, the house and keeps coyotes away, and and. Um, protects all the critters. Now bison don't need a dog necessarily, but um, we did lose some chickens when we first started raising Brooks's chickens. Uh, so we just kind of need a dog around here to protect uh, the place and watch out for it a little bit. You know, we're gonna keep continuing to uh, raise chickens and whatnot, and it's good to have uh, Pyrenees, uh, these guard dogs around. So uh, we've, we've, I've been around them my whole life and we've always had just one around and uh, they're good dogs they're loyal and they uh they will protect your place and fiona has done a great job over at the dunbar place from mom and kevin keeping the coyotes and stuff away um, from their other dogs and brooks named her obviously elsa um if you couldn't tell but uh we, we took it and ran with it and so she uh, does love the water and does love the mud because it is hot so um we'll keep you uh We'll keep showing you Elsa a little bit here and there, but uh, welcome to the Ponderosa, Elsa. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy seeing Elsa because um, she won't be this big for very long. She'll be a, a big dog pretty soon. She'll be bigger, way bigger than you, Maya. <laughs> Maya's not too happy about the new dog, by the way. supplement feed's been helping you can see where they've been rubbing their horns right here to get to the feed but they're they're getting it it's helping them through this drought right now This is where I'll catch the Big Joe herd at, um, in this area here. I don't know if you can see what's going on, but this place, it's got it's weedy and stuff because I haven't let animals in here. But uh, this is the workout area. This is a hold. This is an area where all this will happen. This is another catch pin right here. I can catch him in. And then we'll get Big Joe, hopefully, to go down this lane. Look at all these grasshoppers. 
to go down this lane and he'll load out right through here. If the grasshoppers are that bad and they're that big, you know it's hot and dry here. There are so many grasshoppers here. I bet the chickens are having a great time. That's the plan. And uh, if you guys remember, I did load the big bull from uh, Texas, part of my Texas 16. I did load him out right here and a couple others. So I feel confident getting them uh, through there. It's just big Joe that I always worry about because um, he's not the easiest to work. But last time we worked him, or well, the first time we worked animals here at the Ponderosa, he did actually really good. He ran through the dock system really nice and smooth actually got him vaccinated and got him out. So stay tuned for that. I will bring you along on that. And uh, it should be interesting, need, needless to say, um, just to find out uh, what, we, what the outcome is with Big Joe. And so I'm not jumping to conclusions here. I'm, I'm thinking about things, just uh, scenarios, just in case. I don't know, we'll just go from there and, and see, see what the results are. And that's all we can do is just wait and see. And then uh, we'll make our uh, choices from there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. And we're getting Project 189 rolling and going right now. And we'll hopefully have some fence done soon. And uh, we can let the big herd out on more ground. So I think that's who we're going to let out in there. Because um, I trust them a little more <laughs> um, with feed. So anyways, uh, I'll bring you along whenever I get them up and catch them and load him out. Hey, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon.